Hello, welcome to an updated presentation looking at the key topic of cross price elasticity of demand. So what is cross price elasticity? Well, of course, it's an elasticity. So therefore, it's about responsiveness. And this time, we're focusing on the responsiveness of demand for good X, could be good, could be a service, following a change in the price of good Y, where Y is a related good. So we're looking across differences in relative prices between two goods or services. Now, crucially, with cross price elasticity, we make an important distinction between substitute and complementary goods. And we'll go through some examples in this revision video. So there is, of course, a formula. So what is the formula for calculating cross price elasticity of demand? Here's the formula, always worth putting in the exam to get a mark. Cross price elasticity equals the percentage change in demand for good X divided by uh, the percentage change in the price of good Y. And we're going to assume here that there is some relationship between good X and good Y. If there isn't, then the cross price elasticity will be zero. We make a key distinction in this elasticity between substitutes and complementary goods and services. So what are substitutes? Well, substitutes are goods and services in competitive demand. They're competing for your spending, for your budget, for your custom. And substitutes have a positive cross price elasticity of demand. The cross price elasticity XED or CPED will be greater than zero. That means an increase in the price of one product will lead to a rise in demand for a substitute. Those are examples. The fierce com competition between Pepsi and Cola and carbonated drinks between Xbox and PlayStation and others in games, consoles, the battle for market dominance in smartphones and uh, competing pizza brands from Pizza Hut to Papa John's to Domino's. Those are all good examples of substitutes in the market. These substitutes are in competitive demand. Fall in price of one product, other things being the same, will lead to a fall in demand for a substitute. Now, some products are close substitutes, others less so. A close substitute, often very similar products. There's minimum differentiation between them and often a low cost of switching if you want to change your spending. So substitutes have a positive cross price elasticity. We can just quickly visualize this in, a, in an XY space diagram. Notice we've got the price of T on the, the y-axis, the quantity demand of good V on the X, where T and V are substitutes. This would suggest, this curve would suggest a strong substitute relationship. You see a small increase in the price of T from P1 to P2 leads to a substantial increase in the demand quantity demanded for V, suggesting a, a highly elastic, strong substitute relationship. Just uh, look at this example. This is a weaker substitute relationship. Yes, if the price of T goes up, uh, people buy more of V, but this time, can you see a big increase in the price of T only leads to a small, relatively small increase in the quantity demanded of V. That would suggest a low positive cross price elasticity. Now, what are complements? Well, complements are goods and services in joint demand. We tend to buy them together. And the cross price elasticity of demand for two complements will always be negative. The sign does matter. An increase in the price of T, for example, will lead to a contraction in demand for T. People buy less T and a fall in demand for a complementary product, good S. Examples. Oh, here's some good ones, I think. Smartphone and apps, hot dogs and buns, my favourite. Oh, my, my, my next favourite, nacho chips and salsa dip. Fantastic example of complementary relationships. Can you imagine having them without each other? Razor and shaving oils and other shaving products are good examples of complements. And complements have a negative cross price elasticity. If the price of X goes down, people buy more of X and they'll also buy more of a complement Y. And this diagram shows a fairly strong complementary relationship. If the price of X goes down from P1 to P2, the quantity demanded of Y increases quite substantially. A strong negative relationship between the price of X demand for Y, whereas this diagram here shows a weaker 
relationship, a big fall in the price of X, there we go, only leads to a relatively marginal increase in the quantity demanded of Y. Let's have a look at three practice multiple choice questions just to see if you've smashed this particular topic. Suppose that market research in Italy finds that the price of fresh pasta increases by 30%, and as a result, the demand for, for wine, red wine, falls by 3%. What can we conclude from that information? Press the pause button, have a go at this question, and then just press play when you want the answer. Big increase in the price of pasta, relatively small decrease in demand for wine. That suggests the two goods are weak complements. The answer is D, and the explanation? Well, the cross price elasticity is, is minus 3, divided by plus 30, that gives minus 0.1. The low coefficient suggests a weak relationship. The negative number suggests a complement. Question number two. If the cross price elasticity of demand for hot chocolate, resulting from a change in the price of T, is plus 0 0.8, what is the percentage change in demand for hot chocolate if the market price of T goes up from £1.60 to £2.00? Per pack. Again, press the pause button, have a go at this question. So T prices have gone up. What's going to be the change in demand for hot chocolate? The answer is C, 20%. Here's the reasoning. There's been a 25% increase in the price of T, 40p increase over 160. We're told the cross price elasticity is plus 0.8, so they are substitutes. Therefore, uh, the change, expected change in demand for hot chocolate is 0 0.8 times 25, which is 20%. And here's one last question for you. Have a go at this one. At a local football ground, an increase in the price of hot dogs from £1.50 to £2.10 increased the average number of beef burgers demanded per week from 300 to 360. Assuming that all other economic variables were held constant, what is the cross price elasticity of demand between hot dogs and burgers? Again, press the pause button, have a go at the question, and then when you're ready, just press play. In this situation, I think the answer is B, plus 0.5, did you get that? The percentage change in the world for burgers is plus 20% from uh, 300, 60 over 300, 20% increase. The percentage change in the price of hot dogs is plus 40%. So divide plus 20, change in demand by the change in price, plus 40, you get plus 0.5. They are relatively weak substitutes. The plus tells you they're substitutes. There we go. We have done a whistle-stop tour through the concept, important concept, of cross-price elasticity of demand.